lots of things. We use things in our lives today to keep us from serving God. But I'm going to tell you, oh, Nicodemus was a man that had laid down a lot of things uh, to repent of his sin. He had laid down the law that he'd been taught. He had laid down the things that he had been raised up with. And sometimes we need to lay everything down and pull off our old coat and put on this new coat that he's talking about and be able to repent of our sins today. But that's what a woman there, uh, she thought she'd say, oh, well, you know, how many people that you've talked to about church and that you began to tell you what they do. I go to church at so-and-so. Uh, when did you go? Last Mother's Day or was it last Christmas? But all the way, I go there. When my family goes there. They've all got, that's kind of what uh, this woman at the well uh, told Jesus. She had all the reasons why she shouldn't do it. And he began to tell her what she needed to do. And when she began to realize what the Spirit of God could do to her, there was a change come back in her life. But here going back to the man that was laying there by the bed. And he said, no man has come by to put me in. You know, a lot of times we like to preach on that as preachers that we need to get out there and pick these people up and put them in the pool. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we can pick them up, put them in the pool, and baptize them to the tadpoles know their uh, social security number. But until they have a, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and let the Spirit of God come in their life, there's no change going to take place. But you know what he told him to do? He said, you rise up and take your bed. He said, you rise up. He didn't say to go over there and get Jim to help you get up. He said for you to rise up rise up. So here's what you see in these three individuals. We see repentance uh, coming there. That's what I wanted to preach on. I had something like last week I thought about. I was going to talk about uh, three three different trees. I wanted to talk about uh, the tree that Adam hid behind uh, in the book of Genesis. And I wanted to uh, talk about how old Zacchaeus got up into uh, the tree there. But I'm going to tell you something else. There was a man that got on a tree and that tree was Jesus Christ. And it takes repentance today. And that's what this is all about. We need to repent. Uh, repent of the things that's contrary to God's law and I want to tell you what we need to do we need to be faithful uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ you know a lot of times I, I just want to go on with this and get started with it uh, when we get in church today I belong to a certain church and I'm doing this and I'm doing it don't have to worry about everything else I'm going to tell you what you need to do you need to cleanse your hands and to open up your heart and come with a pure heart so you can worship God and you know and we understand that today and you know not that I'm better than anyone else but I'm going to tell you that you need to repent Repentance is where it's at. And if you don't repent, you're not going to be able to see the kingdom of heaven. They sang a song there a minute ago where the road is never faith. Uh, this little old preaching boy, uh, he's going to heaven one day. I want you to hear this. I want everybody out at TV land to hear this. One day I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be welcome home because of what Jesus. That's right, Jim. Well, what Jesus does. Not because he gave me the opportunity to preach. I'm glad that he chose me. I denied uh, the things there. And when Jim was talking about that, I remember riding in old coal truck and I remember that uh, when God called me to preach and I told him to get everybody else in the church to do it but he wouldn't leave me alone and I remember this and I told I told the church and I uh, stand uh, firm on this and we sang about amazing grace I was coming across a uh, Gatliff mountain uh, it was after dark because we sat in line over there and I started up that hill I was coming home it's probably 11 o'clock at night and I remember going up that hill and I got to thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ and I got to thinking about uh, amazing grace and I, I got to sing a little bit about that, not a singer, but when I crossed the top of that hill, I was preaching just as hard as I could about the amazing grace of God, and God spoke to my heart, and this is what he said. He said, see there, you can preach the unsearchable riches of my love. And I'm glad today that I took me a long time to surrender, but I'm glad today that God saved me and called me to preach, give me an opportunity to that. But I want you to hear about repentance. Do you need to repent? Uh, speak to your heart to God. My, my uh, term at church is this, uh, draw yourself a circle and get in it, and you Lord get there and I'm going to tell you what you do if you do there and do it with a repenting heart uh, you'll come out a better individual and if you're lost hey, he'll save you if you'll come. You've got to come uh, to the right source. You've got to come for the right purpose and you need to receive the right uh, prescription that he had. We go to the doctor and he gives us a pill to make us better uh, keep our blood pressure down and maybe our, our, our diabetic there and we trust him in the Lord but we need to uh, act upon that but I'm going to tell you what you do if you bring that prescription home and you set it down on the table and you don't never use it, you're never going to be any good. I'm going to tell you what, if you leave Jesus uh, sitting by the wayside, you leave him sitting there, you'll never receive what he has there. You may know that prescription, you may I know it from front to back, and you may know all the things, but I'm going to tell you what it says. It says we've got to confess our sins. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not no maybe there. He said we have to believe in our heart and confession is made uh, there with our mouth today. We need to understand what that means today. True repentance is being a uh, part of what God 
says for you to do. Oh, Nicodemus, you know, if you read and study about uh, Jesus' crucifixion, he was pretty close by. He was the one that helped him get down off, off of that tree. So I'm glad that I didn't get behind a tree. I might have been at one time. I'm glad I didn't have to climb up in a tree. Oh, Zacchaeus got there. I'm glad that I looked to the one that was nailed to the tree. I told the church Sunday that he didn't have to hold his hand down to nail it there. Uh, he laid it out there and he said, put that nail right there and put it there. Well, you you don't know what you're talking about, preacher. I don't think they had to restrain him because he had done the, uh, the love that he had for him. So, you know, repentance is what I wanted you to hear. You need to repent. You need to repent. If you're not right with God, you need to repent. Uh, you need to repent of the repentance of that we have in our heart today. You need to understand that there. when God speaks to you, you need to rise up. You need to be able to rise up and, and do what God wants you to do. So if you're out there and you're lost and undone, uh, you uh, understand that God wants you to be saved. Uh, he wants you to uh, come back into the fold if you've drifted away and you need to, those things cleaned out. Uh, you know, those that uh, uh, go and they act like they're going to church, I get, might get in trouble, but I'm going to just say that. Uh, out there in the world, they got people that uh, goes to church and they act like they're part of the church and 